During the High Middle Ages, England and Normandy had a special relationship. You might ask, what led to this relationship? And what role did this relationship play in the future regarding the Normans and the English? Join us in this Liberty episode as we explore the Norman conquest of England blow by blow. Turbulent and unexpected occurrences characterize early medieval European history. One of the most prominent and violent occurrences of this period was the arrival of the Vikings, who terrorized Europe for centuries. Their arrival catapulted the world into the legendary Viking Age, which had tremendous consequences to Europe via vis its socio-political arrangements. The arrival of Vikings in England in 793 AD set Western Europe on a course that no one could hope to change. Over the centuries, the invaders settled and took hold of power across continental Europe from Western Europe to the Kievan Rus. Once they established that they were there to stay, the Vikings began to be assimilated into the ways of their hosts. They adopted their language, traditions, and even religion. However, their belligerence and prowess in conquest remained intact. Even centuries after their northern roots were forgotten, their desires to sail, conquer, and plunder ran deep in their blood. They were particularly active during the 10th century AD, when they amassed in great numbers to sail across Central Europe's open riverways aboard their longboats. Always in pursuit of fresh plunder, their excursions were always immensely destructive. However, with time, their expeditions and raids assumed a character of settlement. West Francia was particularly vulnerable to Viking attacks as it lacked an effective way of dealing with the Vikings. The elite of West Francia deeply feared for their kingdom's capital, Paris, for the vast riches it possessed made it ripe for plunder. By the early 900s, these invaders were making settlements in North France. Fearing for the longevity of their kingdom, Francia elites came up with a decisive plan to establish peaceful relations with the invaders. In 911 CE, King Charles III of Francia established the Duchy of Normandy through the Treaty of St. Clair sur Epe. The Viking warrior Rollo was the first Count of Normandy. With this arrangement, King Charles III hoped that Rollo could provide him with protection against his kinsmen who were wreaking havoc across continental Europe. Rollo, who had then converted into Christianity, lived up to the king's expectations. It is worth noting that at the time of Rollo's settlement, his official title was that of Count. However, his descendants assumed a more prestigious one of Duke. No one dared correct them. Additionally, the Vikings subscribed to the Norse pantheon and spoke a variety of Scandinavian languages. However, by 1066, the Normans were part of Christendom and adopted the French language. Over time, Norman dukes established themselves as not only capable warriors, but also astute leaders. They transformed the duchy into a complex and well-organized society. Over time, the duchy grew to become one of the region's most formidable forces. While Francia experienced relative peace due to its alliance with the Normans, Anglo-Saxon England suffered multiple incapacitating blows from the Vikings during the 980s. As the attacks increased, English kings reached out to Normandy for help. In 991, the English king, Althered, in a bid to strengthen ties with the Normans, married the daughter of the Duke of Normandy. This marriage officially established blood ties between the English and the Normans, which would have momentous and unforeseen consequences for both nations in the future. When Viking attacks escalated, English kings took refuge in Normandy. From 1013, English kings spent over 30 years in exile in Normandy. English kings ruled from exile until 1042, when they returned to England. When King Edward the Confessor died without an heir in 1066, many claimed the English crown. One of the contenders was a Norwegian named 
Hadrada Harold, who had blood ties with the English royal family. The second contender's claim was equally valid, the Duke of Normandy. The Duke, who was initially referred to as William the Bastard, due to his background rather than his personality. Later, he would assume a more congenial name worthy of his exploits. The English did not relish being lorded over by a foreigner. This made them look unfavorably toward the claims of William the Bastard and Hardrada Harold. As a matter of public interest, the Anglo-Saxon aristocracy elected Harold Godwinson as their king, paving the way for the Battle of Hastings and the Battle of Stamford Bridge. After his election as king, Harold prepared feverishly against a Norman or Norwegian attack, as Harold, Hardrada, and William the Bastard were eager to make good their claims. In 1066, together with their forces, Harold Godwinson and Hardrada Harold clashed in the north at the Battle of Stamford Bridge. The result of this battle was an English victory. The English victory was Pyrrhic, as it left the Anglo-Saxon forces terribly weak. No sooner had the Anglo-Saxons finished burying their dead, news of a Norman invasion in the south arrived. It is said, on the day a monkey is destined to die, all trees in the jungle are slippery. The ensuing battle would change the fate of England forever. Despite the fall of Anglo-Saxon rule, the Norman conquest of England proved to be a blessing in disguise. It strengthened the English monarchy, and within a century of the conquest, English kings would control a bigger chunk of France than French kings did. It also pulled it out of the Scandinavian orbit into a continental orbit. Thank you for listening to this Liberty episode. We hope you have enjoyed and learned something new. Like, share, and subscribe to Liberty for more.